So if you just hit record to the cloud. All Thanks. right, there we go. Awesome. All right, take it away. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just share my screen. Let me go ahead and oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Um, Summer, can you now that you're the host, can you find the setting that allows me to share my screen? <laughs> Should be in, um, if you go under, I believe under more and then settings, that's where that should be. Hang on, I'll, I'll pause my, um, I don't even hear, oh, you're, you're muted somewhere. I'll pause my video real quick. I'll come help you do that. Give me one second. <clears throat> I think we got it. Next time I'll send the link out so that we have. Okay, we have let's try sister. this. Uh, let's try this again. So, um, share screen and that's the one. Okay. Yay. Can everybody see the can everybody see the screen? Okay, awesome. Yes. Summer, if you would do me a favor and keep an eye on the chat uh, for questions. So if you have any questions as we go along, by all means throw them in the chat. We'll do our best to um, to get to those on the fly. Um, questions come up as we're going and definitely do ask them before we we get too far down the road so that we can make sure we're trying to answer your questions. So um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name, as Summer uh, introduced me, I'm Brian Iverson. I'm co-founder here at My City Lender Home Loans um, and co-host of the Jay and Brian Show podcast, which is on YouTube. It's actually a um, playlist podcast. Um, one of the things I'll talk about, actually, is that YouTube um, within the playlist now allows you to set up a sp specifically a podcast playlist if that's content that you're you're creating. Um, and so it, please head over to our, our YouTube channel. It's My City Lender TV. Um, check that out and, and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. I think we're right around 200 subscribers now today. And um, this, this presentation is really kind of born out of a, a labor of love um, and, and really um, out of what we've learned from the Jane, doing the Jane Bryan show. It is a podcast, but it's also a video podcast. And Originally, our YouTube channel was just the Jay and Brian Show YouTube channel, but we realized we needed to create a lot more and a variety of content to help promote My City Lender to reach as many families um, and business partners and maybe new loan officers as we possibly can. So we launched My City Lender TV as our YouTube channel with the Jay and Brian Show existing on there. Um, and it, it's been a, um, a very interesting and awesome experience learning how to, to do this. Um, like I said, we're at about 200 subscribers today, which... Um, doesn't sound like a lot, and it's obviously in the grand scheme of things, um, we've got a long ways to go, but um, it actually, um, it takes commitment and and regular consistent content and good content and all the things we're going to talk about in the presentation to get there, um, but it's neat because we do have people reaching out to us now through um, through our, our, YouTube is effectively a landing page for us now, another marketing tool, um, and so we're, we're definitely seeing traffic that way. So, 
Um, let's start. So this presentation is, is my seven tips. Um, I say my, but I want to put that in quotes because these, these ideas and strategies really aren't mine. There's what we've learned over time. And I will point to the people that we've learned them from uh, for sure um, as we go. So I, I always like to start with uh, some, some quick facts um, to kind of set the stage is in terms of why you should have a YouTube channel, first of all. And then to kind of set the stage for, for the presentation today, um, obviously the power of YouTube is to help reach a larger audience than just being on social media. Um, and that's where we were, my partner, Jay and I, with My City Lender before the Jay and Brian show came along and got us really going with YouTube was just a lot of uh, video content, but only on social media. And social media, as we know, is it's here today, gone in 30 seconds, right? Whereas YouTube is, is a it's a searchable library of content that sticks around. And that's just at the surface of what it can do for you and, and mean for your real estate business. Um, so, so some quick facts, um, Google is the number one search engine for home buying and selling uh, research, um, the, the how-to information. Um, people are always going there to, you know, how to buy a home, how to sell a home, how to choose a real estate agent, how to stage a home, home decor ideas, how to paint your house. Um, all things homes, home research related generally starts on Google. 54% of homeowners and potential buyers are viewing videos to obtain general real estate information. And this is going to point us to YouTube. So where are they seeing those videos? Well, they're going to Google and they're searching for all of these how-tos. And guess what? Google owns YouTube. And Google likes to promote YouTube videos. We're in a video-driven world. Um, it's, it's a swipe uh, video world now where everybody's looking at reels and shorts and TikTok videos and everything else. And we're going to talk about that um, as well. Um, but Google owns YouTube, likes to promote YouTube videos. So when you have somebody who's searching for, um, you know, I need to find a, a real estate agent in Chandler. And if you have some, some videos on your YouTube channel that specifically target um, Chandler, Arizona, for example, you know, how to, how to find the right um, you know, neighborhood in, in Chandler, Arizona, there's the good possibility that you're going to come, your, your, your video is going to pull up high on those search results and that's how they can, they can get to you. Um, so tip number one is we need to optimize our channel. So to start with, we want to talk about um, the, it's, this is the, the, the look of it, the design of the con, the design of the channel, um, the artwork, um, obviously the design of your content, what you're putting on there is, is important, but by optimize, we're talking about your channel, look, your branding, your about section, your video descriptions, thumbnails, which are really, really important. Um, and then using keywords and, and your calls to action. So I'm going to pause here real quick and promote Canva. Uh, I'm not a paid sponsor of Canva, although sometimes I think I should be. Um, I absolutely love Canva. I used to be a Microsoft publisher guy and um, Canva came along a couple of years ago now for me and it absolutely changed my life. Um, it's so incredibly, if you don't already know about it, maybe you're living under a rock. I'm not sure because it's been, it's been out for a while and, and uh, maybe you know about it, but you haven't tried it. It's absolutely worth your time because it's, it's a one-stop marketing mega machine for pr quickly producing really awesome and beautiful um, marketing materials, including um, all of these elements we're going to talk about for optimizing your YouTube channel. It's just super easy to use. Um, they have a free version that still gives you access to a lot of tools, um, a lot of templates that are already built out and beautiful, and you just have to go in and customize them. Um, but definitely check out Canva for to, to be able to do all these things that I'm going to talk about right now. So profile image. So now we're, um, first of all, I, you know, I, I, I kind of drew this presentation up from the perspective that you you maybe have a channel already, but maybe you haven't done anything with it. You you haven't really dialed in the 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 branding and the 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 artwork like we're going to talk about here. Um, if if you all need if anybody on the call doesn't even have a YouTube channel yet, I'm more than happy to Summer and I are more than happy to sit down with you on that and help you get that channel launched. So reach out to us and and let us know what we can do to help you get it launched. Um, but once you once you have that um, that channel launch, and it's very easy to do, by the way, if you don't already have one, um, you're going to want to go in there and 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 optimize the the look and the feel of it and the artwork and everything. The profile image is very important because although it's small, your your profile image is going to appear on every real estate video, every every sh video you share on YouTube. Um, my recommendation for real estate agents is to use your headshot. 
um, and make sure that your face is is clear, that there aren't distractions, there's no no busy backgrounds. Um, and the more visible your eyes are, the better. You might not like your eyes, but people want to engage with other humans. And I, I think you you reach a higher level of engagement with other people and they they will, will feel like they're getting to know you a little bit better if they see your face in a lot of a lot of these um, in, in a lot of the the videos. And so, my recommendation is to use a good headshot for my SETI lender for, for your um, profile picture. And of course, nowadays there's a lot of a, there's AI photo tools that are pretty cool um, that can quickly produce a, a very good looking picture for yourself. Um, your banner is the next stop um, and is arguably the most valuable space on your YouTube channel. Um, you you want to make sure that it's, it's uh, I, I would say don't make it too busy, but um, but make sure you've got uh, your logo, contact information. You want your contact information everywhere. Um, a tagline, if you have one, or a brief description of what you do. Use the banner to tell people what it is that you do or what it is that you're going to solve with for them in, in your videos. Um, all of these things go into creating that um, uh, for, for people to want to come back to consume more of your content because they know exactly what they're getting. Um, for us, we we obviously wanted to brand My City Lender Home Loans uh, and, and My City Lender TV. And then, um, as you can see, it now says featuring the Jane Bryan Show. Um, and we'll talk about the playlist where that exists on the channel um, in just a little bit. But we felt that that was, at least for now, as we transition from just the Jane Bryan Show channel to My City Lender TV, that it was a good way to transition to have that there. Your channel trailer video. This is uh, a pinned video at the top of your channel page. Um, you want to take this opportunity to create or choose an engaging video that clearly shows what you offer and, and tells the, the viewers the type of content that they can expect from you. Um, you know, think in terms of promotional videos or other interesting videos that really kind of highlight what your unique abilities are and your skill sets are that you bring uh, that, other, that other agents uh, might not have. Um, don't miss this opportunity. So this video, when the first time that somebody um, comes to your channel, it automatically plays. Um, and so it's really, really um, powerful. If you have a, a good short, you know, quick video, um, you can see that it's, it's, a, it's a widescreen format. So you're not going to want to do a vertical video there. Um, but make it short. Make it, you know, if you can, my suggestion is 60 seconds or less um, to, to capture somebody. The trailer description is also right there. So it's it's really the one of the first things that viewers see on your real estate YouTube channel. So it in, in some ways, it's even more important than your about description, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, you want to use this space here, this opportunity to describe the video that they're watching. So the, the, the promo video there um, and name specific questions and problems that you help clients solve. You'll want to use that space to um, include a, you know, subscribe to our channel link. Um, I would also, if you can, fit in your contact information again. It just doesn't hurt to have that that everywhere, but be very intentional about this description. Um, this presentation doesn't really get into the weeds in terms of uploading videos and how to how to do all that kind of stuff. Again, we're always happy to sit down with you to show you how to do that off offline. Um, the, I'll tell you real quickly, the way you, you put a video in this, your, your channel trailer video in there is you upload it like you can upload any other video. And then within the video manager, you designate it as your, I'm sorry, in the branding section, you designate it as your channel trailer video. Really, really quite, quite simple to do. Um, and then, so your about section page is, is generally going to be viewed by people who are, maybe not ready to just hit the subscribe button. They want to learn a little bit more about you. Um, so people considering whether they should subscribe to the channel um, or reach out to you for help. So maybe they they have seen a video and they've liked what they saw and they have more questions. Um, they will, they're going to be looking for how to get in touch with you. That's where a, the about section I think is really um, important is where you want to make sure you have your how to get a hold of me um, and maybe other links. So links to social media, um, but certainly your landing page, your real estate landing page link, as well as your, your phone number. And, and, um, you know, to the extent that you're comfortable putting your contact information there, you want it there because that's where people who are now thinking, I need to get in touch with this person. They're going to go to the about section. 
Um, okay, and playlists. This is a really, really important part of this presentation. It's it's something that we learned from um, this guy right here. Well, he's one of the guys I learned this from, Jeb Smith. He's a, a successful real estate agent out in, in um, Southern California. I think he's in um, uh, Huntington Beach area. And um, Jeb Smith, write that name down. If, if Check out his YouTube channel. I think he's probably at 90,000 plus subscribers. His content is generally geared towards market updates. Um, he talks about uh, mortgages and, and, and um, uh, mortgage product updates and things like that. His videos are, are generally eight to 10 minutes long. They're, they're highly, he sends it to somebody to produce them, as you can tell, B-roll and stuff like that. Um, but pay attention to his playlist. That's what I want to point you to when you go visit his website, Jeb, or his YouTube channel. Just search Jeb Smith and he'll come up, you'll see him. Um, um, he, he has his playlist very well um, laid out. So he, you know, he does have um, everything you need to know about conventional loans, everything you need to know about VA loans. He has, um, um, he has market update videos. I think he has a, a listings video playlist in there somewhere. Um, and that's something I'm gonna highly, highly recommend you use your YouTube channel for is um, to, to, show off but but have all of your listing videos in one place so that when you go on a listing um, presentation you have this cool youtube landing page to, to show your potential client and then you show them your you go to your playlist and here's your listing videos and these are all the videos that i've done with previous customers um, i think it shows really really well and um, is, is just a great way to utilize your your youtube channel but um, your playlist should cover I think what you're passionate about. So it could be home decorating ideas. It could be home staging ideas. It could be, um, it could be specifically, uh, you know, information you want your clients to have about about mortgage financing. Um, it could be, uh, you know, videos that you might make about what's going on in Chandler. Um, the reason why playlists are so important is because it it creates more more content. It, it organizes more content that YouTube is going to is going to show people who are already watching one of your videos and then it here's a playlist you have the ability to to put on your video when you're talking about you know hey I you know I made a video about this also check out that video we've got a playlist I will put it'll show up on my screen here they click on that now they go and do another video and that tells the algorithm that this person likes your content and they want to stick around and it really really helps um, uh, foster retention so people coming back to your content, which really fosters the, um, the, the growth, the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm, um, showing it to more and more people who are also looking at videos that might be similar to yours. So um, be very intentional about your playlist. Um, again, it's another thing that we've got some good experience with here and are happy to, to sit down with you one-to-one -to, -one to help you structure that. Um, it's not hard, but it's really, really important. Um, and, and good thumbnails are, are just vital when it comes to optimizing your channel. So when you uh, put in you know, more longer form videos, um, anything longer than 60 seconds. So YouTube considers a short 60 seconds or less. Um, you, um, if it's a longer than that, it's gonna sit there as a, as a standard sort of long form video. Um, and you're gonna wanna have a good thumbnail with that. Shorts are different because people are just, you know they're swiping by and there's not really a, you can have a, a quick, maybe graphic that starts your video, but um, thumbnails really aren't used that way when it comes to shorts. It's really about the longer form content, um, but it's very important to create a, a you know, vibrant, engaging um, thumbnail that has a, you know, has a tagline, you know, like this was, I used that for a, a, uh, a VA myths busted video that I did um, a little while back and um, got pretty good engagement. I, part of it certainly hopefully was because of the thumbnail again, Canva, Canva is brilliant for quickly creating these um, and try to include your face on there. Try to, try to get, you know, get, get, you know, your persona on there um, for sure. Um, again, we can, we can definitely help you guys with designing these as well. Um, incidentally, I should, I should go back real quick. Believe it or not, the uh, text on your thumbnail actually is also picked up by the YouTube algorithm. So even though you might, it's a, it's a static image that you're uploading um, the YouTube algorithm actually will will read that, and and that'll be part of their their algorithm. So, um, so being creative about what the text is on your thumbnail is also, um, and using keywords, which we'll talk about again in a little bit, is 
is also really important. Um, tip, uh, any questions there? I'll stop real quick and see if anybody has any, any questions. Victor asked if you just put your videos up on your playlist and I said that you just did yours. Say that again. Victor asked if you put other people's videos on your playlist and I said that you guys just put yours. So, uh, so that's a good question. Thank you, Victor. Um, what you, um, let me see if I can, let me see if I can share another screen here with you. I'll go to my, I'll go to our YouTube channel um, and try to answer it this way. Let me go to that channel first. There we are. Oh, 197 subscribers, almost there. My channel. Okay. Let me share. So I can figure out how to do that real quick. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to find the uh, the uh, button to. Oh no, it's right here. Never mind. Um, let me do a new share, and we'll go over to right there. And I'm going to hit share. Are you seeing uh, our YouTube channel here? Okay, perfect. Um, so what I would what I would do there is um, typically you're not going to want to share other people's videos directly on your channel, but what you can do, um, and I believe it's under community here, is um, let's see here. Maybe it is under playlists, actually, now that I think about it, created playlists. Um, I think there is a um, there's a playlist, right, that you can you can share that you can have on there for liked videos. So you can videos that you like and engage or other channels that you want to help promote. You can you can definitely do that. And I'm trying to see the best way to do that, because I thought there used to be um, a spot where you actually display other channels that you follow kind of thing. I'll get back to you on that. I, I'm not seeing the link here right now, but I'll definitely get back to you on that. That's a really good question. Let me go back to our presentation. Okay, can you see the presentation screen again? No. Are you seeing the uh, the blue screen again? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so now uh, tip number two, we wanna, we wanna talk about optimizing your content. You're still stay... on the website, Brian. Still on the website. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. start again then, stop share. There you go. Which screen and then are Vic you? Victor had another uh, follow-up. He said he was thinking of co-branding with the vendors. That was the idea. Co-branding with, oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, if you do a, um, you're talking about maybe doing a collaboration video. Is that? I'm not necessarily, if you were going to add someone else's video, maybe it's my city lending, something that you guys actually produce that would be on my playlist. Okay. So that's, yeah, excellent. I, I think I definitely understand the question. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get back to you on that because I know there's, again, there's a way to share other people's content or for other people to to see that you follow that content. And I do think there's a way to share, to um, have a, a, a playlist or another way to display specific videos that, um, again, videos that you you have liked and engaged on that you would want others to, to be able to see through your site. So that good, great question, I'll get back to you. But the short answer is, is this is really all about you and what you do. Um, yes, obviously the, the primary, um, Correct. It's about it's about your your content um, your content library that that is 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 searchable and available for others to to find. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me get. Okay. So tip number two is we want to optimize our content. And I probably could have talked about the thumbnails in there because that's kind of part of your content, but you're already here because you know that video is, is far more engaging than pictures. And, and so with that, the quality of your videos has a major, major impact on the engagement and the, ultimately the leads you're going to receive by, um, by putting together and, and, and doing your, your, um, your YouTube channel. So um, we want to talk about um, 
in this section, we're going to talk about creating engaging and targeted relevant content. We're also going to talk about content format. Um, so when it comes to your engaging, targeted, and relevant content, there's there's we'll go over real quickly the most popular categories that we see out there that um, real estate agents are using. Um, educational real estate videos. Again, 96% of people watch explainer or educational videos to learn about products and services before they make any decisions. So even if, you know, talking about more broadly, not just real estate, but they, they search, we search Google for everything um, and videos come up. And so people are, it's, we're a video driven world. And so I think, um, I think for real estate agents, making educational real estate videos is really important. And that, you know, that would, would exist in different playlists, depending on what you're educating them on, whether it's, you know, staging your home, whether it's, it's um, listing strategies, um, how to prepare to sell your home, how to prepare to buy a home, things like that. Educational videos um, absolutely do need playlists on your YouTube channel. And it could be, again, it could be um, financing updates. Obviously, financing's a big part of the real estate process most of the time. And so it makes sense that um, that people are going to have questions for you on that and they want you want them to be able to find you. Um, listing videos, we talked about this before. Obviously, um, nowadays, it, it, I'm guessing it'd be difficult to find an agent that's not uh, working hard to create videos for the listings beyond just um, static pictures, right? So um, you wanna make sure that you're, um, you're creating a, a good playlist of listing videos that live on YouTube. So you're gonna have your listing videos that are gonna exist on the MLS, they're going to exist on your real estate landing page, of course, but you also definitely want to have them in your YouTube channel. Um, again, it becomes a, a great marketing tool for you when you sit down with listing clients, potential clients, to show them what you've done in the past. It really shows well. And that that can be, you know, in-home listing videos. It can be drone videos, things like that. You, you really want to use YouTube for that type of, of promotion. Um, community highlights. Um, a lot of content you can create with this. Um, local restaurants and businesses highlighting them, um, events and activities. You can um, get into maybe highlighting specific neighborhoods to help buyers decide where to buy. You have to be careful, um, obviously, not to violate fair housing laws. You know, for example, you have to be you have to steer away from you know mentioning anything demographic related, um, religious landmarks. Uh, I mean, even you know, pointing out and suggesting that this school might be highly regarded is actually a bit dangerous these days um, from, from that standpoint. So, but, but again, highlighting um, uh, community highlights, I think can be very, can produce very impactful videos. Um, when it comes to content format, there really are, are two basic formats to discuss when it comes to YouTube. Uh, shorts. Um, we're going to start with shorts because it's, it's really the most important, I think, format right now. Um, we all know that we're living in a, in a video swipe world now, whether you're on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, all of those platforms are aggressively driving you to videos and keeping you in that cycle of, of swiping by. And so, um, we, we want to make sure that we're, 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 we're absolutely producing short form content. Um, we'll, we'll, we, we have, we can get into a more detailed conversation about, um, what that constitutes, but generally speaking, for YouTube, it's 60 seconds or less. For Instagram, I believe it's two minutes or less now. Same with Facebook. Um, TikTok is just TikTok. They're all they're all um, they're all videos, regardless of how long it is. Um, but but really, really spend a lot of time thinking about um, neat little reels that you can make, um, whether it's touring a you know a new build or um, uh, or maybe a reel about an open house. I you know I, a lot of ideas out there. Um, definitely. Um, think about making short form content, not just long form. And then of course, long form, more vlogging style. Um, these are, you know, sometimes I, I've seen, there's a, there's an agent out there. His name is Blake Clark. Um, if you, if you don't follow him on Instagram, you should check him out. Blake Clark. Um, he, he does really beautiful listing, a lot of listing videos. And they're, they, I think a lot of them are definitely going over 60 seconds. He, he's prime. He's on, he's on YouTube, but he's also on Instagram. Um, they're, they're really, you know, beautiful, more vlogging style, like, hey, come check out this amazing house that, that we're, we're touring today and, you know, gives an overview of the house and, and things like that. Um, that kind of content, I think, really bodes well for both a, a um, you know, setting you up as a, a, a specialist in terms of the real estate process and understanding 
uh, what makes a great house and, and why buyers should be interested in a house. I mean, that's, that's your wheelhouse. And so I, I would definitely focus on making those kind of videos. Um, we want to avoid overly general content. So we're talking, this whole point of this presentation is how do we, how do we get people to want to watch and then how do we retain them? Um, the retention side of it is so, so important. It's not just how do they come up in a search, you know, how does one of my videos come up in a search? It's do they want to keep watching? Um, so you have to have to avoid overly general content. For example, a general video on the process of buying a home with, with no locality or targeted demographic that's behind the, the motivation of the video, um, it's, it's not going to provide much value and people won't watch it long, number one. They're going to click off because they're not feeling like the information is tailored to them. Um, and um, and, and they, they, you know, they'll, they'll click off early on, which means that the YouTube and the social media algorithms won't favor it. Um, and they won't keep pushing it. And you'll see your view counts pretty low when it's overly general. Um, on the other hand, if you create a, for example, a detailed market update video on the housing markets and trends in the Phoenix area, or even more local, like for example, um, what's going on in Gilbert or what's, you know, in housing in Chandler, um, true, you may overall reach a less broad audience, but think about it this way. You're going to, anybody who's, who's searching for, interested in, in buying or selling a home in Gilbert or Chandler, and they're on Google making searches that are alluding to that, whether they're here or maybe out of state looking to move in, these videos are going to come up. And because you're talking about Chandler specifically, it's going to come, it's going to be much more um, personalized and engaging. They're going to watch the whole video. They're going to be much more likely to subscribe. And uh, so you want to be as specific as you can with your contact and content and as local as you can be with your content. Tip number three, good editing and production quality is going to lead to more engagement and leads. I know this goes without saying, um, but it's really easy to, to um, favor getting out more content and, and, and kind of get a little lazy on, the, on the, the production quality of it and the look of it and the sound of it. Um, one of the reasons why YouTube is so powerful for real estate marketing is because video is more engaging than written text or pictures. Um, and we've gotten to a point now in this day and age where there is a ton of video content out there. I'm not talking about um, a, a necessarily a ton of real estate agents doing a good job with YouTube, because I don't think that's true. I think there's still a huge opportunity for real estate agents to set themselves apart using YouTube with good high quality content. But in general, there's a lot of good high quality content out there. Um, when you look at videos like Blake Clark does or like Jeb Smith does, you'll see what I mean. The content quality is really high. So you want to pay attention to that. The good news is it's not hard and it's not really that expensive. So what do you need? Why do you need good editing? Let's dive a little bit deeper than that. You want to be removing awkward pauses, mumbling, um, uncomfortable camera movement to keep your videos flowing nicely. Um, you want to be intentional in your, your, um, you know, your cinematography, your, how you're actually shooting it, but then how you're actually editing it to eliminate unnecessary background noises, cars going by, voices, things like that. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit in terms of editing in this presentation a little bit later. I know those questions always come up. Um, some of us like to edit, some of us do not. And I'm, I started out liking editing and I ended up getting to the point where I needed to get help for that because I wanted to keep making content. And I think we're at our best in as loan officers and uh, real estate agents when we are making content, not editing it. That's my opinion. Um, you, uh, when, it, when it comes to your selfie videos, your talking head videos, hey, I'm at this listing. Um, um, hey, did you, you know, real quick video, did you know this? Um, you wanna make sure you're adding subtitles and background music to all of those videos. Um, it really does create a more engaging video. So the people looking at it are gonna want it. They're gonna stick around and watch it longer, hopefully to the end. Um, and um, and, and it, it really helps with the, the YouTube and then the social media algorithms to, to um, promote it more because it, it's, it's a more engaging, interesting. People are, are looking at it longer. They're maybe watching it again because they, they were engaged in it. Maybe they didn't get the whole point the first time they watched it. They watch it again. Um, all of that adds up to um, a lot more viewership. And I'm going to talk about um, a couple slides from now. I'm going to talk about a uh, for um, kind of talking head selfie videos. The the one that's in my opinion, Barnum, the one you should be using. 
Um, so which editing tools do we use? Um, great question. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's two ways to do this. You again, do it yourself or hire somebody to do it. When it comes to the Jay and Brian show, um, we actually use uh, a service called Upwork now. So it's, it's like Fiverr where, uh, people, um, offer their services, um, all around the world. And so we, we use somebody that's overseas, uh, to do the Jane Bryan show full edits and then the, the shorts for us. But when I go into the studio to record a uh, quick, you know, the more you know, talking head kind of video, um, I use Blink, and Blink is amazing, and Blink is is fully uh, AI integrated now. Um, it's it's not free, um, it's not super cheap, but it's actually when you realize what it does for you, it's incredible. So why do I use Blink? Um, it it auto generates and ac it accurately and auto generates subtitles and captions that look beautiful um, that you can easily quickly customize to look totally pro. You're not going to be spending time. Oh, they got that word wrong. It totally missed that word. It, um, you, you won't be spending much time doing that. It really accurately does it in 10 different languages, by the way, um, saving you all kinds of time and, and money in post-production. I mean, it, you know, 48 bucks for a year, Think of the amount of content you can do. And it, again, it's really, really quick. Um, I did discover recently that it's got a lot of new AI technology built into it now, which includes auto um, uh, dead space elimination. So it'll automatically find the, the beginning, it'll automatically find the end, and it will automatically cut out any dead space in your videos, which is really important. You want fast paced videos nowadays. Um, it has a teleprompter built in, but not just a teleprompter, a dynamic voice syncs teleprompter that works extremely well. Uh, anybody who's used a teleprompter for, for selfie videos or talking head videos before knows that it's very hard to find the right speed. Um, either you're, you're, you're racing to keep up with the teleprompter or it's too slow for you. It's dynamic in this one. It goes at your pace, which means your video sounds a lot more natural and genuine. So I highly, again, I'm not a paid spokesman for Blink, um, but I highly, highly recommend Blink for any of your selfie uh, or selfie style videos like like this you can see me on the screen there um let me see i'm going to do something here real quick bear with me one second i'm going to reshare oh there we go share screen i'm going to share my sound i've made this mistake so many times i don't want to make it again where right, i've got a couple of videos on here and i want to make sure you can hear the audio so if you can put your speakers on so you can hear it as well i'll go ahead and share that and then I'm just going to hit this quick sample video that I did using Blink. And you can see how, how um, awesome it is. Should I buy a house right now is the most common question that loan officers and realtors get asked. And almost always loan officers and realtors simply say yes and miss an opportunity to connect with a new client. Are you considering a primary home purchase to provide more security for your family? Rates have risen, yes, but they won't be this high forever. It's very likely you'll be able to refinance to a low rate in the future, and you won't be subject to rising rental rates as a homeowner. So definitely check out blink if you don't already know about it um highly highly recommend it um if you really if you want to edit your own videos there's um there's obviously a couple of different platforms out there i when when we started the jane bryan show i was doing all the editing and i used power director 365 um it's by cyberlink and it, it is a really really good platform and it's a lot less expensive than adobe premiere pro um, I, it's probably overall not quite as sophisticated or, or capable, but it, it, it does everything that we've needed it to do to produce really cool multi-camera um, podcast for the Jane Ryan show. Um, Canva, again, you can actually use it to create shorts. Um, I don't think it's the best platform for creating shorts, although it does allow you to use all of their graphics and, and they have audio clips and things like that. It's a little bit more involved. Um, but the Canva definitely can do it. Questions on editing. And we're already at 11.47, so we got to kind of keep this moving. Okay, so tip number four is to, is to make sure you're carefully picking your keywords. So again, um, Google owns YouTube. And so Google is all about, when we talk about keywords, we're talking about SEO or search engine optimization. So we want to make sure that when we are setting up our videos on YouTube that we're using, uh, we're using good keywords in, in the titles, in the descriptions and on your thumbnails for sure. And again, in the banner, any keywords um, that you, you think are really, really highly targeted for what you do and what you wanna promote on your channel, 
you just want to have those um, everywhere. Um, optimizing your, your videos for YouTube searches means creating videos based on the keywords and covering topics that your target audience is searching for. Again, that's the SEO mentality. So for instance, if you are um, looking for first time home buyers, you, you want to use keywords like affordable homes for sale or buying your first home or how to buy your first home. Also, since your content is highly localized, your keywords also need to point to where you're hoping to find these buyers. Your keywords should include be in conjunction with locales such as homes for sale in Chandler. So, um, look, so you know, for example, affordable homes for sale in Chandler. Be as specific as you can and as targeted as you can with your keywords. And again, you might think that that's going to really kind of tighten in the net potentially, uh, but you're going to get a lot more engagement on those videos locally, and it will it will find its way to to potential um, buyers who are coming from out of state because they are searching specifically for Chandler, for Gilbert, for Mesa, for Scottsdale. Um, they are searching that specifically. So. Um, keyword placement, I, we talked about that right at the beginning there at the, of the tip. Um, so where should I put the keywords? In short, absolutely everywhere. But let me drill that down for you. So in the titles, uh, this is the, the um, not, not the thumbnail, but the, the title of the video. Make sure you're using keywords in those spots for sure. The descriptions, uh, the subtitles, you want to be very, let me go back a second. You want to be very, very intentional about your descriptions on each video. Um, you probably will have certain keywords you're going to want to repeat over and over again. Again, it's all part of getting that algorithm used to promoting your videos because you're using, people are looking for certain types of content and you've had those keywords in all of your content. They're going to find it uh, more often. Um, subtitles. Um, you, when you do your, um, your shorts or your selfie videos, any, any sort of selfie style videos, whether it's a shorter or, or longer, the subtitles are also picked up by the algorithms in terms of the keywords and um, and calls to action, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So make sure that you're putting your keywords in your subtitles as well. Um, and in your custom thumbnails, I mentioned that earlier, yeah. believe it or not, the algorithms do actually read the text that are on thumbnails. Um, tip number five, calls to action. This is very, very important. Uh, I think a lot of, especially when you're getting started with this and you're not, you're, you're kind of figuring out your rhythm and your groove and how, you know, what you're going to do with your videos. People often miss the opportunity and they, they miss out on, on, on the calls to actions um, in terms of trying to convert them to a lead, right? Um, subscribe to our channel, comment, like, share, uh, reach out to us, you know, our contact information's in our, in our, you know, it's everywhere in our about section. Um, you want, again, you want calls to action everywhere. So we'll start with examples of what calls to actions are, and then we'll go into where, where they should be. And don't miss the importance of this. CTAs are really what gets you engagement in your videos. And the YouTube algorithm relies heavily on viewer engagement to determine um, whose videos and how, how often to show them. So um, you want to ask for subscribers um, in, in every video. Different schools of thought. Some people believe you should wait till the end, which means they actually like your video and they've gotten follow on to ask. Others think ask for it right up front. I kind of fall in the middle there. I think if they make it a you know 30 seconds into the video and they haven't shut it off, they, they're probably interested in it. And so I'll say, uh, you know, before I go any further, I'm going to stop and take a minute, ask you to subscribe. It really helps me to reach more home more home buyers um, to to be able to, to to help them, and we really appreciate the support. Um, liking comment, um, liking it, commenting is better than, it gives you a lot more engagement. It gives you, it, it, the algorithm likes commenting more than likes. So you really want to be posing questions in your videos. Um, you know, does anybody else have any suggestions out there about what, what might work for this? Um, let me know what your experiences are down in the comments. Asking people to comment is a big deal. And obviously liking everything, everything creates engagement and um, looks good to the algorithm. Um, hit that bell, be notified of future videos. So for you, when we're talking about YouTube, um, we want people to subscribe, but beyond that, we want them to hit the bell because that now tells YouTube to automatically promote your, your next video to them. They don't have to be searching for something related for your video to come up. YouTube's automatic. They're going to send them an email um, and they're going to, when they go to YouTube, it's going to pop up on the top of their, their videos list there. Uh, click the link below to visit our website. So obviously we want people to come to your real estate landing site through this. This is an important mechanism now that gets people to do that. You want to be promoting your website, have your link in all your descriptions, have it in your about section and verbally tell people to ask people to do it. Um, and playlists, check out our playlist. We talked about how important playlists are earlier. 
you want to be mentioning those in your videos as well. It just creates more, more retention and people coming back to seeing more of your videos. Where do you put them? Well, everywhere. Your YouTube banners, your trailer videos and descriptions, your about section. You verbally mention them. We just talked about that multiple times in your videos. Um, again, in all your video descriptions and, and in all your social media posts, which brings me to tip number six, which is we want to think about social media as more along the lines of promoting your channel, your YouTube channel, your content. Um, again, social media videos are here today, are here now, gone in a few seconds. YouTube is where everything is saved. People will go back to it time and time again. They can search for it and find it. Really can't do that. On, it's harder, much harder to do that on social media. So here are a few tips to maximize your social media promotion. Um, use all of the platforms you have available to you. So Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, you want to post mainly shorts. We talked about that. It's a it's a swipe video video swipe world that we're in now. So think in terms of shorts. My my advice here is is so that you're not trying to figure out you know how long can it be on this platform versus this one. Um, go with 60 seconds or less if you can on shorts. Sometimes that means taking longer form like you did a maybe you did a five or ten minute video, slice it up into 60 seconds or less shorts and use those on social media to to. Um, to get more engagement to promote your YouTube channel and get more engagement for you on so social media as well. Um, and, and again, the platforms, they are heavily, heavily promoting the shorts. So the Jane Bryan show will release a full episode. We'll average three to 600 views, maybe on a uh, 300 views on a long form, the full video on shorts, thousands of views. YouTube wants, they're, they're promoting shorts. They're now monetizing shorts for, for creators. Um, so that is really going to get you a lot more eyeballs, but it's critical to use the description and your calls to action in those shorts to get people to convert to subscribers and ultimately reach out to you for real estate services. Um, making sure you're also optimizing your keywords and hashtags um, on all of your social media posts and using your CTAs, your calls to action on all of your social media posts, um, again, verbally, and then in the, the descriptions that you put in your social media posts. Um, one good way to help you do that is uh, it, it's time consuming to do that, um, to post across all the platforms, as we all know. There are um, systems like Hootsuite and Sprout Social that are really helpful. I don't really know pricing on them. I know they're not super cheap, but what's cool about them is that you can schedule all of your content um, and be, be setting those up when it's not, um, you know, the right, when you're not needing to be in, in business development mode during the day, for example. Um, you can be managing that off hours, but then it'll post it when you want it to be posted optimally during the day. Tip number seven, collaboration. So in terms of growing your YouTube audience, um, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Find other YouTubers. Don't think of all these other YouTubers out there as your competitors, um, especially when it comes to kind of developing what you want your channel to look like. Think of them as um, opportunities to learn from, to see how they're doing it. Um, and to potentially collaborate with, because um, when you collaborate with others, you're now reaching a targeted audience that is looking at videos like yours, and they're much more likely to convert over and become subscribers of your of your content. Um, so this, we're going to. I'm just going to give you a few steps to help you um, get to a place where you're you're collaborating. Um, I don't know if any of you on the call are 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 doing podcast content, um, but finding other podcasts to be a guest on is a very, very good way to, to collaborate. Um, these are the two guys I mentioned earlier. Um, step one is to find other YouTubers and influencers with similar content. So find other, other creators that are putting out content like you, like your content, similar to the type of content. But I, I'm, again, I'm going to suggest um, aiming upwards, find content creators that are doing it better than you're doing it right now, frankly. Um, and, and two guys, uh, Blake is local. Um, his, uh, his Instagram is at blank B Clark. His, his YouTube is at blank sells blank underscore sells underscore uh, AZ. And then Jeb Smith, definitely two um, YouTubers to go check out different types of content between the two of them, but they do it very well. Again, Jeb's got 90,000 subscribers, I think. And Blake is probably around, I think six, five, 6,000 subscribers on YouTube and maybe 20,000 followers at this point on Instagram. Um, so start by finding other um, agents who are producing content similar to what 
you want to be producing. Um, once you find those, those other influencers or YouTube channels, you want to follow and engage their videos and posts. Now, I don't mean just liking. I mean, commenting like, wow, that was a great video. I, I you know, the information you gave about this was really important um, for a lot of people. Good stuff. Keep making those videos um, and doing that fairly regularly. Your comments are going to shoot up. These guys probably get a lot of comments, but your comments will shoot up to the top of their list and they're going to notice you. They're gonna, it's going to start developing a, a sort of no like and trust, which you can then convert into reaching out to them to talk about ways you might you might be able to collaborate. I think the best approach is to talk about ways that you might be able to provide value to their audience. So an example could be um, reaching out to um, agents in other states where there's a lot of migration from to Arizona. Um, another example could be if you're a buyer's agent, you could create a, a video with um, an inspection company. Maybe you have maybe um, your favorite inspection company has a YouTube channel. Uh, if not, you can certainly find one. Um, discussing what buyers should be looking for when taking a look at a house, like things to look for when you're viewing a house. Because when you go look at a house, you're, you're running through it really quick, right? Um, buyers in general are thinking is, you know, they're thinking lifestyle, they're thinking big picture, right? They're not looking at a lot of the little things. And so I think doing a video like that could be really instructional and informative for your buyers that you sat down with an inspector, for example, and created that video together. And you'll be reaching that person's um, audience because they will promote them with their people and then you'll be cross promoting and it's 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 just a great place to be with your your YouTube development um, and then again once you've once you've reached a level of engagement you feel comfortable reaching out to, to YouTubers and other influencers to collaborate on it's just again think about it you're you're reaching a, another audience that's bigger than yours that want content like you create there it's a ready-made group of people that are much more likely to subscribe to your channel, even more so than when you promote it on social media and you have a much broader audience that may or may not be interested in the type of content you have for them that day. Um, bonus tip, and I'm almost done is you got to just turn on the camera. If you're not already doing it, if you're, if you're, if you are newer to it, the hardest thing is just turning on the camera and putting content out there. Um, one of the biggest hangups to getting content out there is, is, being afraid of what will it look good? Will it sound good? Will I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Will my video be awesome? And the answer is it might not be early on, but it's okay because you're putting something out there that somebody else isn't. And it's very easy for self-doubt to come in and no YouTuber was great the first time they turned on the camera. Um, the examples are endless. And I'm gonna start with our own, the Jay and Brian show because it was awful when we first started it. Um, the lighting was terrible. Um, th those microphones in front of Jane and myself were $15 USB mics. It sounded like we were talking through voice modulators. Um, we were, it was, you know, very dry, very overly general, you know, don't do this during a mortgage process. Great. You know, um, not memorable. And, uh, and so here's a quick sample of the very first episode. Hey everybody, of Jane Jay, this is super exciting. This is momentous. We've been thinking about doing this for a long time. It Nobody cares how long we've been thinking about this is, uh, putting a podcast years, together. Probably. probably two years in the making. Yeah. Not looking yeah, at Yeah, we camera. were thinking that uh, it would be really cool to, to do something like this. Um, we, we, that day, um, I was the one who went out and got the microphones. Could you all hear that, by the way? Could you hear how bad the audio was? Yeah. That day, I, um, I surprised Jay and I said, hey, I got these two microphones. Let's go shoot a video. And he was very hesitant. He'll tell you that he was super, super sh camera shy and he didn't want to do it. And I was like, Jay, we're going to go do this. I've got the tables put together. I got the mics up. Let's go shoot a video. Um, what is this random thing we put on the desk? Or, I don't know, you know, it was, <laughs> um, and, but we loved it. Like we, we came, we, that was a 10 minute video. And we're like, this is awesome. We want to keep doing this. And so we, we, we were lucky and we found something that we'd like to do. Um, we, um, we realized that it was too dry to just do mortgage stuff, him and I talking, even though we enjoyed doing those videos. So we decided one day to have a guest on. I don't know if any of you know who Shane Sauer is from Greystone Title. Uh, he's, he's, he's my best friend in the title business um, and, and a good friend um, non-business wise as well. And uh, he agreed to be our guest number one. And we knew from that moment on, we were gonna do a guest show because it was just awesome, but we had to give it a try. We were all nervous. We we're like, do we really wanna do this? Does it make sense? How's it gonna go? Um, you know. And, and and he he hit us right off the top, got us laughing, and and it went from there. But Shane, was, how'd we do on the M and M's? Uh, ten out of ten, Brian would do this again. Um, but again, 
If I find a brown in there, there's going to be trouble. (laughs) (laughs) We had an an intro. Um, We we had by then we obviously had much better lighting. We didn't have the copier featured on our on our (laughs) in our backdrop. Um, the microphones we'd upgraded to Shure SM7Bs, which are the same ones that Joe Rogan uses. Um, but it was still a single camera shot here. We we weren't ready to invest in multiple cameras, and we were using one camera. In this episode, we punch in on digitally, and it looks a little bit grainy when you punch in on on a um, on a video. And this is just a cell phone camera. Um, but we uh, we decided that's what we wanted to do, and and it it, it kind of took off from there, and we. We uh, this is one of my favorite episodes we did with uh, um, uh, with Tony. He's he founded uh, Compassion Alliance, which is an organization that helps first responders get mental health help. Um, and now we had multiple cameras. The um, fastest growing talk show podcast in America. We had a, a Welcome intro. to the Jay and Brian Show. And, Welcome uh, to the Jay and Brian and Show. I'm Jay. Now, I'm Brian. And today cameras. we have a special guest and a good friend of ours. Free Welcome show to the now. show. It's Thank you. There, um, even better lighting, um, just in, in, in a dedicated studio that we didn't have to tear down, put up and tear down every time. So that was cool. And it, it, you know, it took us a year or so to get to this phase, but it only happened because we turned the camera on one day and sounded terrible and looked terrible, but discovered something that was cool and just kept working at it. Um, the good news is nowadays we all have really, really good video cameras already in our pockets. You don't have to go out and buy Shane, how do we do on the MS to, to start producing beautiful looking um, listing videos or or you know selfie talking head videos. Um, just just turn on the camera, um, go for it and you really you really can't lose, especially if you discover you really like doing it. Um, it's it's awesome. Um, thank you very much. That's that's the end of our presentation. Um, again, we would Summer and I would absolutely love to sit down with you one to one to go over your YouTube strategy and, and help you figure that out, um, help you get it going. If, you, if you, you're if you really just getting it off the ground, help you optimize the look and feel of it. Um, certainly brainstorm about content ideas. That's, we we love doing that. So thanks again. And um, um, we have Summer, about 10, sign us off. We have about 10 minutes left. It goes oh, till 12.15, okay. and yeah. which is perfect because um, I'd like to open it up for questions uh, for Brian. So if you have any questions that weren't answered in the chat and you would like some more info or you would like, um, yeah, just any questions, please, please, this is your time right now. Oh. It's okay. It was a fire hose of information. You, you, <laughs> you'll, you'll, questions will come up later, and and please, please don't let a question go unanswered. The only bad question is the one you don't ask. That's what I always say. All right. Well, if uh, if there's no other questions, I just want to say thank you guys for uh, attending. And um, if you again, if you guys would like to come in and use this studio. We would be happy to have you. Or if you just want to come check it out for ideas for setting up your own, then um, yeah, we can help you with that as well. Um, I'll be sending out just like a thank you email to everybody uh, with all of our contact information so that you have that for future. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you guys have, uh, if there's no other questions, then you guys are free to go. Summer, if I could just add one more thing on the studio, yep. um, we we do have a couple of different real estate teams now that utilize our, our studio um, in podcast format, but we we absolutely um, can help create um, selfie videos or, or talking head videos um, to help you create different content as well. So um, we'd love to help you out with that. All right, great. Well, you guys have a great rest of your week and weekend, and we will talk soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.